Several Greenville attorneys have filed a multi-million dollar class action suit against a national chain eye surgery center. Recently, the number of litigations on cataract surgeons have increased. To know the reason for this, let's rewind back in time. Cataract surgery is now labeled as a refractive surgery. Because of the increasing ambitions of cataract surgeons, the number of unhappy patients are on a all time high. Inaccurate biometry is one of the major reasons for this, especially in some challenging scenarios. Thus, presenting to you 10 commandments for biometry in tricky scenarios. We did an online search for this and the first scenario is that of poor cornea and ocular surface. The commandment to be followed here is taking history of contact lenses. Before performing biometry, the patient needs to remove a soft contact lens three days prior, a gas permeable lens at least one month prior, and a toric lens one week prior. Ocular surface disorders, MGD, dry eyes, and punctate keratitis need adequate prior treatment before biometry and surgery. The next scenario is biometry post refractive surgery. In cases with well-centered ablation to calculate the intraocular lens power, we can use ASCRS online calculator which is freely available. After filling the patient details, the calculator allows us to fill the pre-operative records. In place of the Atlas Ring Topographer, one can choose values from the Holiday EKR map. The Holiday EKR map gives us K readings in different zones starting from 1 to 7 mm. The EKR 65 mean can also be used. After getting results, minimum or average value should be considered in case of a myopic LASIK. In post radial keratotomy, the target refraction should be kept minus 1 or minus 2 depending on the cuts of the cornea. The next scenario is of toric IOL calculation. There are many online toric IOL calculators which are freely available today. After filling in all the necessary data, the commandment to be followed here is including posterior corneal astigmatism. If posterior corneal astigmatism is ignored, then it leads to overcorrection in withdrawal astigmatism and undercorrection in against the rule astigmatism. The next scenario is of irregular cornea. A regular cornea is characterized by its keratometric value, which is usually calculated from the anterior curvature of the central cornea. However, in an irregular cornea, the anterior to posterior corneal curvature ratio is altered and therefore the effective corneal power cannot be predicted. One must identify keratoconus, pellucid marginal degeneration, post lasik ectasia and decentered ablation for which a good knowledge of topography is a must. At least three readings must be taken to ensure a repeatability. For irregular corneas with stable topography, corneal surface can be regularized by topo guided customized ablation treatment. After surface ablation takes place, we then can perform cataract surgery with intraocular implantation. The next scenario is post penetrating keratoplasty. Usually such cases lead to high amount of astigmatism. Such cases need to be treated with customization of toric IOLs and it is seen that these give good visual outcome. Biometry in dense cataract is another tricky situation. In dense cataracts, we fail to obtain the axial length 
using conventional devices. This is when we have to go back to ultrasound and choosing the dense cataract mode in Lenstar or the new IOL Master 700. The commandments to be followed here are to check the standard deviation and the signal is to noise ratio between both eyes. Standard deviation more than 0.2 diopter should be avoided. Whereas avoid signal is to noise ratio less than 2. The next scenario is biometry post retina surgery. In situations like silicon oil filled eye or combined phaco vitrectomy, consider using optical biometry with two third of axial length. However, in cases of phaco with silicon oil removal, intraoperative retinoscopy is a must. The next scenario is biometry in high myopia and hypometropia. In case of high myopia, older second and third generation formulas produce a hypermetropic refractive error. This should be avoided by all means. There have been studies which prove that Barrett's Universal 2 formula, Holiday 2 and Hill RBF formulas are effective in high myopes. In case of high hyperopes, smaller the eye, greater is the error. Thus, we need to confirm the actual length using optical as well as immersion biometers. Intraocular lens power. The IOL formula of choice here is Hages and Hoffer Q. Intraoperative biometry is the next big thing. It gives us the opportunity to double check with preoperative findings intraoperatively. Lastly, corneal asphericity must also be taken into consideration as it affects the postoperative outcomes. More prolate the cornea, more is it associated with negative prediction error. Let's forward to the present time again. On following these commandments, not only will the litigation stop, but also our patients will be much happier.